Welcome back, Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. This is the last in our series of screencasts dealing with how to use the smart board in your classroom. But it may be the most fun one for you because today we're going to look at using some of the interactive and multimedia features that the smart board can bring into your classroom. To do so, we're going to click on the gallery item over here on the left hand side of our screen. Now, I hope you can appreciate how many more graphics are available to you with notebook software than there ever was for other software like Word or PowerPoint and so forth. Notice that there's 6,520 items in my gallery and of those over 5,000 are pictures. We know how to do a search for pictures by just going up to here to the search item and, and typing a word and it will find for us the pictures that match that word. But today we're going to look at the second line here, the interactive and multimedia items. There are 396 of them and so I'm just going to give you a taste of these items. And then I suspect you're going to spend a lot of time playing with this after this screencast is over. So I'm going to click on the down arrow and now I have a, a lot of icons available to me and it turns out that these are all interactive. Now by interactive let me give you an example. I'll drag this algebraic functions over to my page. And I'll just put it right here. Now notice that it graphs equations. And so I could change values. Right now if I wanted to change uh, that first 2 to a 3, I could. I could change the 2.5 to something different if I wanted to. All I'm doing is clicking on the interactive item and seeing how that affects the graph. So this is an act, this is an item that's interactive. That is, as I make changes to the function, the graph changes. And I can zoom in and out and so forth. Well, that's an example of an interactive item. How about if I go to a new page and let's look at adding another item. And again, I'm just going to give you a whirlwind tour. I'm just going to go down the alphabet and grab a few of these and, and share them with you. Oh, here's a B. Let's drop the B over onto our page. Nothing seems to happen, but if I click on this icon that looks like a small speaker here, uh, <laughs> obviously we get a buzzing B. So you'll have to use your own imagination for when that might be uh, important in your classroom. So I'm going to delete that. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about the items that we drop over here is that they may not have all of the handles that we're used to like the resize handle and so forth but usually you can get rid of them by simply right clicking on the item and choosing delete if you want to get rid of it oh let's pick another one how about if we look at breathing and respiration breathing and respiration is actually an instructional page and we can click begin and it tells us that we need to drag the pieces of the lung over to this patient and we have to put them in the right place in the right order. Now I am not uh, very good at this. So my career as a pulmonary doctor is probably not going to uh, take off after this. So I'm going to grab the bronchial tubes and put them here. Hope that's where they go. This is the trachea, I'll put it here. This is the larynx, I'll put it here. And then we'll click on resuscitate and see if we've put these in the right places. Ooh. Well, looks like I didn't do it. <laughs> Nonetheless, you can see how this would be fun for kids to do, to, to learn about the parts of the pulmonary system. Let me delete that. Let's go on and try another one. Again, you're getting a whirlwind tour today. Let's come down and try a calculator. You don't have a calculator handy? Well, yes, you do. You've got one right here, and it works like any other calculator. I can do 65 times 129 equals, and there's the answer, and so forth. Okay? If I want to get rid of that, and I notice the handles don't appear, if I try drawing a box around it, I, I can delete here, and now it goes away. This next one, it's called Calendar Generator, is particularly interesting. Let's pick a month. Maybe I'm interested. What will the calendar look like in August of 2014? 
So I'm going to scroll down to August and I'm going to make the year 2014. Generate the calendar. Now, it's you might say, well, that's a small calendar. So what? But if you click on this arrow, watch what happens. It inserts the calendar into your smart notebook page. Let me delete this little one now. And I have a calendar handy for the month. Pretty cool. Let's go to the next item. I'll go to a clean page for the next item. Let's try clock. You, if you don't have a clock in your classroom, no problem. Just grab this icon and drag it over. And actually, that's the correct time. It, it always keeps the correct time. So you have a clock in your classroom right here on your smart notebook gallery. Let's go to a new page. And obviously, there are other clocks that we could have tried. Let's try dice. There are a lot of dice. There's multiple dice. There's 10-sided dice. Uh, some dice talk to you. Well, let's take the blue dice here. What's cool about this is if I click, it spins and talks. <laughs> if I click again, it spins and talks and so forth. Pretty neat. If I want to get rid of it, I can always right click on it and choose delete. Let's come on down. Let's try another interactive one. I think I'm going to try the flip a coin one. Here we have a quarter and I want to flip this quarter. So if I start and then stop, start, stop, start, stop, and so forth. It's a coin toss for me. Now this one I can make larger if I want to, start, stop, but not all of them have the handle available to make them larger. We'll delete that one. We'll try another one. I'm going to come down to a science one and this one's going to be parallel circuits. Notice I'm skipping a whole bunch of these here and I encourage you to come back and try them. This is another one of those built-in lessons in which we are supposed to build a parallel circuit. So let's give it a try. Let's put a light bulb here, a light bulb here. I think that would be parallel. We'll put our battery and our switch up here and we'll click the switch. Looks like I'm better at, at electricity than I am biology because I did construct a correct parallel circuit. And, and to show you that, if I if I don't construct the right circuit, like if I put these in series instead of parallel, it will tell me that I haven't done this right. And then I can reset and try again. Okay, let's delete the parallel circuits one. Let's go on to another science one that many of you science people will be interested in. Let's look at the periodic table. As you might guess, this is an interactive periodic table. So if I click on an element, like for example aluminum, it tells me all of the important information about that element. I can click on another one like calcium and it'll tell me that information. I can highlight just the metals or the nonmetals and so forth. An interactive periodic chart. Let's try a thermometer. As you might suspect, this thermometer is going to give us the ability to change the temperature to go to Fahrenheit or Celsius. Right now it's settling in at Celsius and we can change that temperature. If I want it to be Fahrenheit, I'd just change the icon to Fahrenheit. And I can make the temperature get hotter or colder to have my students learn to read a thermometer. And the next one I'm going to show you, let's go to just a new new page. Let's go to timer. There are a couple different timers to pick. I'm going to pick this one. Maybe we've given our students an assignment and asked them to complete it in three minutes. We can set our timer. I'm going to set my timer for just a few seconds to show you how it goes. So I'm going to click.
and I'm going to reduce this down to 10 seconds. And I'll start it. So it does the countdown on my screen. And you're going to hear the noise in a minute. Okay, built-in timer right on your smart board. There are many, many other items that you can have available to you in the interactive uh, part of the gallery. Another icon we haven't mentioned yet is up here on the toolbar, and it's called Measurement Tools. I'd like to see how long this interactive timer is, so why don't I grab my ruler? With the ruler that I bring down here, I can measure it. Looks like it's about six and a half centimeters long. I can flip that ruler upside down, and now it looks like it's about two and a half inches long. Now, of course, all these scales are, are relative scales, and you can make your ruler larger by grabbing the icon in the bottom right hand corner, and you can also shrink the size of it if you wish by dragging from the right. Uh, if you want to measure something that's not perfectly horizontal or vertical, um, you can rotate it. So if I want to rotate it, I grab in the light colored area up here and that lets me spin it. Again, the, I don't want to click in the dark area, that just moves it. But if I click in the light area, I can spin the ruler in various uh, directions. There's also, on these measurement tools, there is a uh, protractor that you can insert and it has very similar characteristics about the ability to, to spin and rotate and so forth. There is a built-in compass that allows you to construct um, circles and arcs and so forth. Um, I encourage you to spend some time playing with these tools, especially if they're a tool that's appropriate to your SOLs. Okay, I've given you just a taste of what's available to you on the smart board. I hope you have a good time finding items here that are of interest to you and your students. And I also appreciate your spending time with these screencasts. They've been fun for me to make, and I hope they've been good for you to learn how to use a smart board in your classroom. See ya.